So I do want to welcome you to, so what we're going to do today is uh, continue our journey of inequalities, but we are going to upgrade this by actually looking at solving and graphing inequalities that are called compound. So compound inequalities are more than one inequality that have an and or an or. So let's look at uh, the first example here. We're writing an inequality, uh, so write in a compound inequality that represents each situation. So this one says all real numbers that are at least negative 1 and at most 3. At least negative 1 and at most 3. So notice what we have here. This is the answer. B is greater than or equal to one, negative 1 and B is less than or equal to 3. So we can write it with that, like I just did, or you can write it like this as a single, as a single sentence. So no word and in between. Notice this is a lower limit, negative 1. B is going to be less than that, or, uh, excuse me, greater than that, and B is going to be less than the 3. So here's your upper limit, 3. Here's your lower limit, negative 1. So what does that look like when we graph it? Well, I'm going to graph both of them together Notice at negative 1, I'm going to have a closed point. At positive 3, I'm going to have a closed point. And this says all the numbers that are between. So that's it. All the numbers that are between. So in other words, if I plugged in a negative 4 here, I should get a false answer. Because it's got to work for both of these. If I plugged in a 0, it would work. Because it works for both of these. Because 0 is between negative 1 and 3. And the same applies to anything greater. Had I plugged in a 5, it would not work. So I would get false statements here, true statements here, false statements here. So let's look at the next problem here. All real numbers that are less than 31, but greater than 25. So notice it doesn't have the word and, it has the word but. When you see the word but, it actually can be, in this case, you can use the word and in, in, this, uh, in the context of, of compound inequalities. So notice here that my n has to be uh, less than the 31, but the n is also greater than 25. So I have an upper limit of 31 and a lower limit of 25. Just to give you a heads up, both of these are acceptable answers. Both of these are acceptable answers. It doesn't matter which one you put. Um, it's, it's easier to write the last one here with no word and just because it quickly tells you where the lower limit is, where the upper limit is. Um, this one takes a little bit longer to write. So again, it's up to you which you prefer. Um, you'll see this a lot. And let's graph that one. Notice that my lower limit is 25, but it's an open point at 25. My upper limit is 31, and that's also an open point. And uh, everything in between should work. So give me a number that's greater than 25 but less than 31. So 29, 28, uh, 27.2, those work. 33 is false. 23 is false. All right. Next one. All real numbers that are less than 0 or greater than 3. Now notice the big difference here. We changed from the word and or but to the word or. Now, why is that significant? It's because instead of two things happening at the same time, it's one or the other happening. And we have to sort of select it. So it looks like this. So n has to be less than 0 or n is greater than 3. So how would we graph this? It is going to be an open point at 0. And it says any number that's less than that. So all of these ones work. Or any number that's greater than 3. Any of these numbers. Because of the word or, it can be either in the blue section here or in the red section here. I'm not saying it has to be both, so it's in between. It's one or the other, like the uh, Knott's Berry Farm example. I'm less than 12, so I pay this much. Or I'm greater than... Uh, 60, so I still pay that same amount of money. 
So we may have noticed a pattern, but when you use the word and, there's a good chance that you're going to connect the dots like this. And when you use the word or, there's a good chance you're going to have a split like that. Now, I'm not saying that's 100%, but most of the time, it's going to be like this. Most of the time. There are some times where uh, they're going to give you an and, and there's nothing actually to connect, and it's going to be a, a, a false statement. Uh, or a situation where they overlap uh, on the or, which means every number ever. So uh, generally speaking, and means you're going to connect the dots, or means you're going to split them across. All right. Let's do one or two more examples and have you finish this at a later time. Uh, we're going to write the compound inequality that represents each situation. So um, let's look at number three, since it's more real world. A circum the circumference of a baseball is between 23 centimeters and 23.5 centimeters. So I'm going to say B for baseball. So I have 23. B is here and 23.5. So the question is, can it be 23? Can it be 23.5? And practically speaking, the answer is yes, it can be. So we do need to have the equal to sign, but let's look over here. The downside of this problem is it says between, but it doesn't say it includes it. So if we read a literal, a literal uh, working of this, we would not put the equal to, a literal here. But since this is dealing with a baseball, um, a physical object, then um, we know that it can include that. So uh, either one of those would have been acceptable in this case. All right, so a tropical storm, uh, by definition, a tropical storm uh, can get, have very high winds of 40 miles an hour, but once it gets to 74, it becomes something else, maybe like a hurricane rather than a tropical storm. So at that stage, so now let's figure out what the range is. Uh, the range is. So here we have um, tropical storm. I'll say T for storm, 40 miles an hour. And it says at least, so it can be 40, but no more than, which means it can include 74. It would look like this. And your scale, you'd have to decide on your scale before you actually graphed that one. So as we approach it, a compound inequality maybe looks more complicated, clearly because there are more letters and more symbols. But when we solve it, we're still going to treat it the same. Whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other side. If I do something here, I'm going to do it to there as well. If I do it here, I'll do it to there. So all sides. So there are two approaches when you have a situation that looks like this. You can either split using the word and, or you can just go ahead and jump straight to solving it. So let's start with the splitting here. How does this one split up? Well, we have two scenarios. One scenario says this, that five is greater than five minus my F. And the other scenario is this one, where the five minus F is greater than 5 minus f is greater than 2. So notice I just split the two like this. It's exactly the same reading. You just repeat the middle part and put the word and there. And now you just do what you're going to do. I'm going to start solving over here. So I have to subtract 5 from both sides. Subtract 5 from both sides. Bring down the negative f. There's a big mistake people will probably do. Forget that negative. Uh, Keep that symbol the same, and I put a zero there. Five minus five is zero. Too often we like to put a blank there, but don't put a blank. Now, in order for me to get F by itself, I have to divide by a negative. Beep, 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 beep. So I do have to do a switch on that symbol. Notice anything divided, or zero divided by anything is still zero, so that doesn't change the value there, although the direction uh, changed right there. So it is now less than, so here's one situation, f is greater than my zero. And now I treat this exactly the same. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I bring down the negative f is greater than negative three. 
And now I divide by negative one. Beep, 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 like that. And now I make my final answer. F is less than three. So notice the situation. Is my numbers are between zero and three. So 0.5, one, two, 2.99999. Those numbers work. Here's the fast cut. The shortcut says, and as mathematicians, you should always look for shortcuts because you want to be efficient with your time, not wasting an hour, but saving an hour. Notice, and you do not have to draw these, but I am just going to show you that each of these inequalities is kind of like a side. So instead of having two sides, the left and the right side, I now have three sides. I have the left side, the middle, and the right side. So whatever I do to one side, I do to all sides. Now, since my variable is in the middle, I'm going to subtract 5 from there. And I'm going to replicate that all around. So notice, I save time because I don't actually have to split the inequality. Now I can just calculate stuff that's going on each side or each section. So this one here, 5 minus 5 is 0. Notice my symbol is going to be exactly the same. And I'm going to bring down the negative f keep my symbol the same, and bring down a negative 3. Now, of course, the question is, what do I do now? How do I get rid of a negative F there? So, I have to divide by a negative. Beep, 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 beep. Now, remember, whatever I do to one, I do to all of them. And why am I beeping? Because that means my symbol has to change direction. There we go. Now, I'm going to bring down everything. Zero is less than or equal to f, which is less than or equal to 3. So now I have a limit. My lower limit is 0. My upper limit is 3. So when I graph this, it's going to be an open point at 0, open point at 3, and connect the dots. So any of these numbers in here, 0 0.5, works up there. 2 should work up there. Now it's wise for you to notice one thing that the graphs in the middle here of compound inequalities with the AND, they usually go between. They usually are inside of each other. So like this, I have an open point here, a closed point here, and I connect the dots. That's generally what happens. Not always, but often. So please take a moment to practice these ones down here. Now let's continue and see in the context uh, of how we're going to solve a situation that has the word OR. So we're going to solve this compound inequality, 3x plus 2 is less than negative 7, or negative 4x plus 5 is less than 1, and we're going to graph it. And the nice thing about this is that we just have two inequalities to solve. And at the end, I get two separate answers that have, are separated by the word or. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides over here to get negative 9, and now I'm going to divide by 3 to get negative 3. Bring down the word or. Then I'm going to continue here. Subtract 5 from both sides to get negative 4. And now I divide by negative 4, switch my symbol, and put down a 1. Now when I graph the two situations, this one here, x is less than negative 3. So let's go to the negative 3 here and graph it this direction. And then this one over here, I'm going to graph like this. x is greater than or equal to, so fill it in, and going in this direction. So notice that when I check it, 0 should work for neither one of these. Because look, I didn't shade it in. So plug in 0 here to get 3 times 0. So 2 is less than negative 7, false. Put a 0 here, this drops out to be 0. 5 is less than 1, false. So these are all false situations, and anything over here and anything over here are true. Do the same thing below. Please check your work uh, on these four problems.